Hey y'all, welcome back to Stoked Big Air Edition. I'm Incetic, with me on this is Blank Tester. Hey kids, how's it going? And Turo. Hey. Oh, I thought you were gonna do your latest iteration of she blanking on my- Wow, you know, alright, you're just gonna, gonna give it, it alright. Like I was saving it up. I was all waiting. Alright, well. She, uh, <laughs> we're going to K2, the second <laughs> other range that was- <laughs> What? No, no, it's fine. We're going to K2. We're going to K2, the second range added in the Big Air Edition. Uh, and it's pretty large, so, you know, it... Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, once again, we're going to be doing the races and then the media and sponsorship. So, you know, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I've got some other various things about the game I kind of want to mention or bring up. Okay. You know, considering part one was just sort of introducing it all in tutorials, and then in part two it was mainly about the racing and then, you know, Bob's story. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, some other things. And this is, you know, like, serious. Talking about some of the other things this game does. So, yeah, you might have noticed that sort of seven-day forecast for the mountain. And so, yeah, a mountain can be, you know, no weather and sunny like this. Or it can be cloudy or it can be in a you know, deep snowstorm, as you saw, and that is sort of shown out, you know, a week in advance, uh, you know, for each mountain range. I guess it's supposed to be, the design philosophy is supposed to be like, oh, maybe you want to see which mountains, you know, just got a bunch of snow and is clear or something and go oh. jump from there to there, you know, if, I don't know, if you have a certain preference. And like, with the snow buildup, they, you know, because you also noticed on that main menu where it shows kind of like the covering of snow, where if it's yeah. been sunny for a while, it'll melt down to its base. But if it's just been after a heavy snowstorm, it can be up to like four more feet of snow. And, and it's one of those things where it's like, the game says like, oh, when a mountain range gets a bunch of snow, it opens up more paths, da-da-da. And I kind of notice it like I have literally noticed that there is more snow in places mm. afterwards rather than when it's at base level but I don't think it's enough or really notice like opening up more paths level you know yeah it's kind of one of those things where you you really do need to play a level a bunch of different times and like really learn the level inside and out to know unless they like really seriously signpost like this is where you would have a new path if no, not for the, you know. It's pretty so. much just like, oh, at base level, it's maybe more rocky. And, you know, if yeah. you ride on the rocky terrain, you're going to crash. Whereas with a covering of snow, that's can, more rideable now. Yeah. yeah, but, I mean, once again, the level design is not like, you know, really, really designed to be over the top to where, like, oh, after a big yeah. snow thing, there, there'd be an yeah. avalanche that opens up another path or so. So it's kind of a cool thing. You know, definitely the different weather is cool, yeah. but I don't know if the, you know, adding of snow layers I don't really want to say enough. was worth it, but, yeah. you know, was... Like, I, it yeah. sounds like, uh, like an ambitious idea that they probably knew that they couldn't fully execute on, but like... A game with a bigger budget and a bigger team probably could do something really cool with that idea. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that Stoked had didn't a really, have a huge budget or team? Had a really cool idea that they didn't have the budget or time to really fully flesh out? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm beginning to see a trend here. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, um, but also then, like, that forecast, it's, you know, not something where... Like, if you shut your game off, turn it on, come back in, it's a different RNG seed or whatever. Like, y you know, I don't know how to describe it without overcomplicating it, but basically it's, you know, it's set. So, mm. once again, you know, you'll be able to see, all right, uh, five days out, six days, in-game days, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, da da da. And also, yeah, it does have a in-game kind of day-night cycle, or rather a day cycle. Okay. You'll see the way it handles night is that it gets to, what, like, 7 p.m., and okay. then just, it'll fade out and get super, super, super dark, and then fade back in, and you hear, like, a rooster caw, and it's 7 a.m. the next day. Like, it's a 12-hour, basically, when the sun is up day cycle, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what my days are like. Okay. And, and it's, again, like, I haven't really noticed, oh, if it's clear out, is the lighting different at, you know, 
sun, early in the day, midday, late day. I think it is just sort of sunny Ooh. overhead and then, you know, yeah. Once again, fade out really darkly <laughs> and fade yeah. back in like you just teleported. Next, but yeah, I mean, different various things that, again, this game does that sets it apart from other... Yeah. And, and it again feels like, oh, if they had a second game, they could have made a night version where it's, you know, dark but for the light of the stars and made that actually work. Yeah, I mean, to do that also, convincingly to do that, you'd need to, like, pre-bake your lighting multiple times over and then transition between them and stuff, and that might get, you know, heavy on memory and also just difficult for them. So, you know... It's, you know, Day-Night Cycle's cool. It's nice that they have, um, they have, like, the weather forecast and stuff. It just seems, I feel like that feels, it feels more like they, they were going for, oh. Wow, it nice. just made you wobble a little bit. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, just you have knees of you off steel. Balance. Yeah, like, oof. Oh, you okay, have yeah. a body of steel. Yeah. You hit that at, like, 70 kilometers yeah. an hour. Either yeah. I do crash and immediately ragdoll and all the life has left me for good. Yeah, or like that. Yeah, I like am that. a body of steel. Yeah. That was weird, too. You just slid a little bit, then you landed a little funky, and it was like, nope, that's like, the end nope. of me. Uh -oh. My weak point was my ankles. And <laughs> no, that crash earlier put you at 1 HP. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, your guy you crashed into the wall and went, sort of ow. <laughs> <laughs> this sort of reminds me of uh, Transworld Snow, just a little bit. The backcountry areas in that game. Yeah, mm -hmm. Transworld Snow had, you know, yeah, in their backcountry levels, they really went with that aesthetic. Or their, or their breaking out of bounds areas. Yeah. Really went with oh yeah, what is the out? Is there like, well, I I can see it's all just like a huge like valley. Kind of. Like yeah. there's no. Yeah, we'll actually see. A lot later, because, yeah, in free ride session, obviously, when we get back to those, you can explore around a lot. There's actually not really an out-of-bounds. I mean, it's that era of games, again, where it kind of hits you with a, you know, soft wall and a return to playable area kind of thing. You, you, you know what's the thing that's really catching my eye about this gameplay right now? The fact that you're turning, it seems really both sharp and precise. Yep. Well, like, it seems almost, like, pretty decent, even. That you can, like, take a fairly sharp turn and end up pointing pretty much exactly where you want to be. Unless that's the magic of editing. N uh, no, there's no drifting, which, I mean, why would there be? But it's, again, something where... I'm not even talking about drifting. I'm talking about, like, you hold left on the control stick or whatever. And instead of turning too far or not enough, you just turn exactly as much as you need to. And the control, it fe it looks like the game controls well. Oh, then that's Does it? definitely experience. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because you're already seeing where yeah, it's sometimes it's hard so... to stay on the line. Yeah. And you're seeing where more often than not, it will be straight, straight, straight. Now the board catches. Sudden mm. take off, you know, exactly where I'm facing. I guess it was I just the last couple races. Look. I wish the game controlled good. as good as the way you see it. Mm. Is like it doesn't control. This ain't my first but, rodeo. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit of a clunker, just a little bit. Okay. Well, yeah, but I mean, the again, the next gate. Uh, there is an arrow above my head that points yeah. Yeah. in wow, the direction. That, that one's really far away, I guess. I mean, huh. better far away with yeah, room yeah, to get there than very close together and so yeah. going so fast that I look can't, how, you know. Speaking of which, look how fast you were going on literal flat ground. Yeah. Like, you were just Please zooming. I'm really excited to get to Downhill Jam, because I, I remember <laughs> that game. That, yeah. That's something I might have something to say about. Um, wow. So then, other things about the game, like, I want to bring up the music in this oh, game. Oh, yes. Because, you know, another kind of comparison you can make with this game versus, like, the Amped games is the design choice of having, you know, a lot of music for it. It has more music than a normal standard extreme sports game, but nowhere near as much as the Amped games that, again, nothing can come close. But it does have, like, just over a hundred tracks, I think. But the kind of odd thing about this is that, like, I have never heard of any of these bands or artists. Like, it's oh. not just the kind of Amped thing where they went to more, you know, minor labels and got, you yeah. know, quality and quantity. Just literally, like, 
I have never heard of any of these artists. And it can be like some rock, some quite a bit of like electronica and some like more world music sort of. But then also some again really weird things like you heard at the very start if anything comes up by this music arcade it genuinely feels like like a kevin mcleod kind of they went and got a really oh. free selection of like instrumentals you know like almost like movie soundtrack music oh, it's really weird that is weird yeah yeah and also like once again in terms of a system that's almost there but just not fully they also went with you know, kind of the, excuse me, Amped Games design thing of having the music oh, always going. Like, the music persists through loading. You know, you back out of a mountain, back to the menu, pick another mountain, go to that, and the music continues. You know, the same song is continuing. And, like, when a song starts at, you know, a time when this will pop up, you'll see, you know, from your Sprint phone what, like, the artist and the song is and, like, the album cover. But often that doesn't happen, and in like the amped games, at least two and three, you know, you could just hit up on the D-pad and see what song was playing at that one time. Uh, in Stoked, I don't think you can do that. The only way you could see like what yeah, song is playing. I think you playing, have to go into the menu. No, no. Like the only way you could see what song is playing, and again, you can't do this all the time. Like if I did this in the race, it wouldn't work. Is to hit left on the D-pad to restart the song and see uh, then, like, that'll give you the information. So it's, again, like, yeah. halfway there. Yeah. Is there no pause? I remember there being a pause song, but but that's, even if there is, that's still a pretty scuffed way of being yeah, the I, I think it's just right is. on the D-pad, goes to the next song, left on the D-pad, either restarts, or, like, if it's in the first few seconds, you know, goes that's back to the song. Up, yeah. Although I will say this game had atmosphere in it, which uh, they're they're not a small uh, hip hop duo. They they've been in quite a few games. Um, yeah, Red Lights Flash. Never heard of them. Yeah, like some of the songs are I guess are on Spotify or so. Like after recording one of the previous ones, you know, Turo, you mentioned that that y'all gone crazy. Yeah, the smart day. went crazy. Tomorrow when Tree is on Spotify, but like, so I the sometimes ending. I've tried to look up one of these artists and songs and found nothing. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Atmosphere, Atmosphere is pretty, by far the biggest act that they have in this game. They were in Underground 2, MLB 2K12, and also just like, have popular songs and albums. But yeah, the majority of these oh. I had never heard of before. Any, any songs you've heard? Oh. Any her songs you've heard that you thought, oh man, that's that's really good actually. I want to I want to hear that again, and then never can find them. Me? Uh, Either I of you. Haven't, I haven't played this game in like five years. Okay. Is atmosphere. Yeah, discovering there's... atmosphere through this game is the only lasting impact it had on me. I I don't think it's gonna be. It's not. Well, I don't even know why I said I don't think I know that uh, it's not going to be anything like in the amped games where they made such great choices that I immediately had to you know scout out a bunch of what I heard like again it's a lot of like electronica which is all right to hear but I'm not gonna you know seek it out seek and put it on out. my playlists and even of like the rock and such it's again like oh okay yeah I kind of like this when it's playing but it's right, not mean. super memorable to where I had to seek it out yeah but yeah I guess like or pause one of the, the band bands, and open Shazam. One of the band's Quiet Drive that actually does have a Wikipedia page. It's one of those with very little on it. Mm. But they have a couple songs and they seem to be alright. Yeah. Huh. And then it's once again, it's kind of like a if we you could do a behind the scenes interview. Because again, like, yeah, anytime Music Arcade shows up, it is genuinely sounds like a royalty free pack that you know they got and just put. I in. mean, that's possible. Music Arcade absolutely sounds like. I mean, I don't know any musician with the word music in their name because that, that just seems weird. That is, I mean, Mexican Institute of Sound is just like. Sound is different, group, right? Like, like that's yeah, that's that's pushing it. I, I yeah. mean, like the. You know, like, Canada did form a governing body, the Boards of Canada, to create music. And people <laughs> say that, that that music is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. But it, do they I uh, just go absolutely lip. The Mexican Institute of Sound, Boards of Canada, what's what's the U.S. going to do? 
Well, I guess they made a horse with no name, so... Yeah. 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 So. And Hotel California. Oh, hey, but notice that during recording this, it started out, you know, clear and day, yeah. and now a storm has started blowing in. That's cool. Yeah. Grab and slot, okay. I like how Quicksilver is already awestruck. Yeah. Like, they're already impressed. Now you're- this is just gravy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're just surprised you're alive. Yeah, I mean... They saw you hit the- the real reason they're impressed is they saw you hit that stone wall like 10 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Yeah. And just come to a complete stop, yeah. Yeah. You own it. Congratulations, you own Oh, Quicksilver. they're pretty stoked about you! Yeah, haha. -ha. That's the name of the game! Oh, that's why they call it Stoke. Now we know the rest of the story. Yeah, now we yeah. know the rest of the story. So then just, you know, some more things to continue on. We talked about how, you know, the tricking follows kind of the skate model of controls of, you know, using the right thumbstick to jump, but then especially using the triggers as your hands, basically, and then the right thumbstick in conjunction with that to do all these types of grabs. And it is going to kind of line up to where, yeah, like, left trigger is your left hand, right trigger is your right hand, and then in the eight directions, you'll grab the board, you know, with that and that way. But, you know, the grabs are overall pretty, like, realistic, not very, like, wild and whatever. And then, yeah, if you do both, you have a couple, you have a few, uh, you know, double hand grabs. Right on. Um, and then it's, yeah, it's kind of I, I'm not quite sure if I like this more than how Skate did it, to kind of where when you're riding the other way, you know, left and right are still your hands, but that means that basically the group of grabs flips. Uh, you know, like if you're riding left foot forward and you do left trigger up, you know, your left arm reaches toward the front of the board and does a nose grab. If you do right trigger up, you know, you basically do like a crail, you know, like yeah. you're just imagine it in your head. Yeah. Like in skate, then if you're going the other way and you do left trigger up, now your left arm, which is behind you, reaches over and does that one and your RT up does the nose grab. Whereas in this game, again, no matter what your stance is, it's the the blocks stay the same between like left trigger, right trigger. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. I like the way. Like once again, the game kind of assigns Ooh, a nice. nose and tail of your board based on your default stance, which once again messes with like grinding and all that. So, so yeah, it's it is sort of I again I'd want to see what they did in like a sequel and such. Yeah. And then also like with grinding, this is another thing where you see it's Whoa. it's you know auto grinding. Like I'm not having to hit a button to do it, but the game can both have too little rail magnetism or too much. Like it's one of those things where it just wasn't programmed fully great mm. like yeah. uh, if you're in riding towards a rail like if you're riding directly towards a rail many times i have kind of assumed the game would magnetize me a little yeah, like more there. than it does and so you see that i just ride right next to it and that usually ends up in crashing you yeah. but then like, also yeah. sometimes you will very clearly see the game try to drag you down to a rail that you're going just over Nice. It's yeah. That looks like you're farting snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's a pretty good photo conceptually, but also it's not taking a photo of any of the maneuver you were yeah. doing. Yeah. It's taking a photo of where you were. Yeah. So once again, all these. Oh well, actually, here this one is very clearly in the air. Yeah. You know. But I mean, I'm ex yeah, I'm excited to see how this looks. Will the photographer earn their pay? I think. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good, actually. I do like Yeah, I, I, avoided yeah, the I blur, gotta say, I guess, during a snowstorm is I usually, like, the best when pictures look the best. Yeah. Because, again, when it's, like, clear out, you'll probably be washed out through all the I, I love crap. this this stock photo dude holding his hands out like that. That's <laughs> yeah. great. You've got style, hands. Yeah, that's yeah. just another quick thing. At, at, and, like, sometimes, like... They spent, you know, a good amount of time and made, like, a collage uh, single picture look really good. And then sometimes it looks like they just threw something together. Like, yeah, baby, and that yeah. goes along with, like, the coloring and stylization of the game as well. Like, it, it, in standard gameplay, you know, with when it's clear out, again, it is very washed out and can look kind of ugly at times. Yeah. But then, like, 
when you're loading another mountain or so and it's showing kind of the one picture they made of you know various pros or the various other kind of collages that have gained tips and such you'll 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 see it if you forget what to talk about but those can look so colorful and so cool yeah shakes my fist in, in the general direction of gears of war yeah i was gonna say it's it's a real shame that gears of war and other games of that era just were so grayscale because i mean it was a cool look for Gears of War, and we didn't really need every game to look like that. Oh, yeah. oh, here we go. Yeah, you saw it like yeah. start just fading out and then go straight to 9:16 a.m. the next day. Ah, so you just froze to death, and then a new person showed up, and this is who you're playing. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. So that's what cryostasis is. No, that's that. This is just death on top of the screen. Oh, okay. Cryostasis would be if. Uh, if he didn't die. Nice. Maybe so I then, froze then and was resurrected the next morning. What happened to me 12 years ago? Yeah. Whoa, oh. turns out actually that Turo is the oldest of all of us by mm. a big margin. Yeah. yeah. Hundreds they of thousands of years. They just weren't unfrozen until 12 years ago. Yeah. yeah. I was actually born in a, the far-flung year of 1994. Wow. Yeah. That definitely makes you the oldest of us. <laughs> and then just <laughs> another kind of tiny quick thing to bring out. Uh, you'll see that like when you start up a challenge, pretty often your guy, your girl, will just immediately kind of turn around and like shrug at you, the player, and it's really weird. And I think it's supposed to be a thing <laughs> of like, hey, you know, where are you? This is an animation for that you haven't done anything in a while. That but somehow the ge yeah, but somehow the game is like counting that up through menus and stuff. So it's like when you finally get into a piece of gameplay, it's just gonna do that at you, and <laughs> it's weird. It's that is weird. Hey, yeah. get out of the menu! Like they're oh, still s they're still sentient while you're in the menus. And yeah, just, you like, can see here I'm tucking you. the whole time, so I'm just building up insane speed. Once again, I do like that aspect. Yeah, it's in control. You know, oh, that's, that's not a bad. Shot. That's a cool shot. Yeah. Nitro would pay tens of thousands for that, and any other company would pay, like, just tens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you change sponsors? Um, yeah, I might have. So, like, the sponsors are kind of grouped into three blocks, and you see that at the Blue Tomato Customizer, you know, you'll see three different squares. So, yeah, if a sponsor pops up for a block that you're already sponsored in, which will pretty much start happening now, <laughs> you know. Um, you can do the two challenges, and then you can choose to, you know, swap sponsors or not. And if you swap sponsors, yeah, you swap and start getting the new sponsor's clothing, and you get a little bit of experience. If you choose to stay after you've said, yeah, I'll do these two challenges for you, you'll get even more experience, you know, as a staying loyal kind Loyalty of Loyalty bonus, yeah. Because I saw the loyalty bonus, and I wasn't sure if that was because you stayed. I mean, I yeah, figured yeah. it was, but... Yeah, so it's like, that's again what I was talking about with that. Again, past those initial ten influence points, you really don't need to do any of like the stick a trick or trick or die kind of things. Because mm. if you just, you know, can go along with what the game asks you to do to keep unlocking stuff, which is the media and sponsorship. Hell, you don't even need to do the races. That will get you enough, you know, influence points to allow you to continue to do the full thing. Like, yeah. the media and spot media challenges just give you more influence points per one, and also, you know, brands will show up and you can choose to do their challenges for even more. Sometimes things will just happen that'll just give you more influence points like this. It's just like, oh, I hit a certain rank. All right, time for more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, okay. it, there's enough passive giving you of influence that, again, it's never like, oh, you have to go I do some free ride it. stuff. You know. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So it's just a game you can do. Tricks uh -huh. in. Yep. Yeah. Right on. This is... One of the snowboarding games of all time. It really, it, it feels like maybe one, no, I, I mean, one is maybe too few. Two or three steps above a game you would see in a movie or a TV show. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, no, definitely. This is better than tightening the graphics on level three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tightening up the graphics. I miss those commercials. Yeah. Fuck it, I'm signing up for TV. What? Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not gonna get TV. So I can see uh, the commercials yeah. again. See commercials. Oh, oh. Yeah. I I was remembering that DeVry was the, you know, online college doing those, and I was like, was there a TV as well college that I missed? No, no, I'm saying the TV commercial. Right, right. You know, that's, We're I've not seen a success. DeVry commercial since I stopped getting TV. <laughs> yeah. Are they still serious about success? I think they shut down. Did they? I don't know, like, like... The government went after those really shitty, like, for-profit for profit online colleges, like Phoenix University and such a while ago. Huh. I don't know if I, DeVry is still up. I don't know. I think they're still going. I mean, it wouldn't okay. surprise me at all if, in this country, we continued to have for-profit and then you just name any business here. Yeah. You know, any, yeah. any industry at all. By the way, I recently, on Amazon Prime, I uh, bought... Uh, the entire first season of John Benjamin Has a Van. Oh, yeah. Such a good show. Lilzy and I have watched, uh, the, the, <laughs> that one episode multiple times. Yeah. Um, and, uh, in that episode, there's a part where, uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. You no, know, if people don't remember that or know that, I mean, you know, like, Nathan Fielder has finally gotten, you know, quite yeah, a bit he's of attention. Huge, yeah. The Gen Z, you know, really loves, like, Nathan for you and the rehearsal. So, like, John Benjamin as a van was a show before those where John Benjamin was the main guy, but, like, Nathan Fielder was one of the crew. And, yeah, and he's the sound it, guy. It was them. pretty funny. Really the funny. basic premise of the show is that John Benjamin, who, you know, in, in real life, he's, he's the voice of Archer and Bob and Bob's Burgers and, you know, whatever. Oh. Um, yeah, he he's the main guy on in John Benjamin as a van, and the premise is they're like an independent news crew shooting bits, not sure which bit is going to be picked up by a bigger station or whatever, and they just do like a wide variety of newsish bits. Um, and it's uh, it's, it's only, the it only same got type one of season. like wild over the top situations happen that get played perfectly straight. Yeah, you know, kind of. Yeah. It's it's a really good show. It's only available. You have to buy it on Amazon Prime, and it's like twenty seven bucks for the whole season. Oh man! Yeah. Now, uh, is there a place to buy and watch Fishing with John? I have no idea, but I've been thinking about Fishing with John. Which is a different show, and I that wasn't John Benjamin, right? No, that no. Was, I but, don't even know what John it was, but it's God, a show. remember back when like. Netflix would just have the most wild, random crap. It just had you weird just shows find like that, something yeah. amazing with your bros at like three in the morning. Yeah. Fishing with John. With I mean, John. I I still cherish the times where we just watch like random shitty action movies that have like a thirty percent rating on yeah. Netflix. Oh, like with your account that you specifically have set up so that it just continually recommends you those. Yeah, that kind of got messed up. Oh, it did? Yeah, my wife doesn't pay attention when she's uh, pulling up the Netflix, and so some good things ended up in the bad no! part. No! Ba I'm going to have to start a new one. No! I don't want good things. I know. I hate quality. She watched most of Ozark in, in the bad account. No! And I was recommending, like, Breaking Bad and stuff, and I'm like, okay. Well, it looks like we just unfortunately have to rewatch all of those incredibly terrible movies. Yeah, we need to so rewatch Alien Warfare and the Kung Fu one. Yeah. You know what's. There was. Okay, Connor, do you remember there was a movie called Monster? That there's there's multiple movies called Monster, and they're all more popular than the one I'm describing. This was where, the one where the black guy just yes. kicks ass. Yeah, he. So like, it's a group of friends that they all go down to like the Louisiana Bayou, something something. A sort of a lagoon monster starts attacking them or whatever, and his girlfriend gets taken, and he's the black guy's the only guy left, and he's he just. Like, even though he hasn't done much for the whole movie this, thus far, the first hour of the movie, he's just going, oh my god, ah! And then, like, the last half hour of the movie, he just kicks so much ass. He just yeah. kills a bunch of people. And then, like, at the very end, there's a part where his girlfriend's getting pulled into a sinkhole. Like, a tiny, like, 
like a claustrophobically small sinkhole and instead of like grabbing her hand and like pulling her out he dives in after her <laughs> and it, the, it's like late at night the camera pans up to the sky and it fades to night and then the next morning and you're like wait what and then he climbs out of the hole holding the monster's jaw in his hand and pulls his girl out of the and it's like he just went into the mud. Like, there's not yeah. even a room down there. Yeah, yeah. What it's did like, he do? He's so, like, just generic for the first, you know, yeah, hour. And then he just goes sicko mode and does shit that, like, no other, you know, final living human of a monster movie ever does. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's a the monster insane. is... Yeah, taking the girlfriend down the sinkhole. The guy dives in, spends the entire night beating the shit out of the monster off screen. <laughs> off screen, and he comes yeah, we don't back even out with his it. girlfriend and a trophy. Yeah, and like it's legitimately the hole is like a foot and a half wide. He has to squeeze to get his shoulders into the hole, and it's just mud. Like, I don't know what's down there. We never see what's down there. <laughs> yeah. Presumably, yeah. enough room for him to stand around and fight the monster. And I know we've talked about, like, Steven Seagal before on this channel. Oh, God. And, like, we we rewatched one of those, like, bad, you know, mid-2010s movies where he wears the gunner shades and, y you know, just flawlessly... Oh, he just still makes those movies, whatever. Yeah. But, like, now we get to rewatch the others. Like, we watched, what, A Good Man? A Good that, Man. That had... We were thinking it had some parts that it didn't actually have, and I think that's because we were thinking of, like, the other ones, right? The other Keone so, like, Wax movies. Now we get to Seagal watch, movies, like, yeah. Absolution again. Yeah! What was, what was the one that we that I, I was there for, where it's, like, the tournament, like, the martial arts tournament? Was and... it the martial arts tournament with, the, with all ladies? No. That would be Lady Blood Fight. No, it was, um... It was, it was like cheesy, like a cheesy '80s movie. Oh, and like he ha like the guy has like family trouble and he has to leave the team, but the hard ass coach is like, "If you walk out on us now, I'm not oh. gonna let you back in." Yeah, um, she's Lil Z would know. She would know the name of that movie. She's yeah, the one who I don't pointed. Think I she showed it to me. One. He's like the movie plays it completely straight, but like the hard ass coach is like telling him to choose between the team or like visiting his dying mother or something. Yeah, it's like straight up like they're they're making him choose between joy keep it staying on the wow. not Olympic team. It was like some other kind of martial arts team. Yeah. And and between that and like his I think it was his dying wife. Yeah. And, it, and like and he was just, just like, like you if okay. you leave right now to see your dying wife, you're off the team. And I'm like And he was like Jesus. okay and he just does Okay bye. Like <laughs> Nice. Why would I stay? And then when he finally comes back, everybody convinces Coach to let him back on. But it's like, why did... I don't... I don't know. And, and then, then at the end of it, they all fucking lose. Yeah, they all they all get their asses beat. And then nice. the one guy on the team who's like, you know, the hothead, like, loose lips, like, yeah. says what's on his mind, and he calls one of the, uh, the uh, guys, one of his opponents, like, a slur... Yeah, and then he's like, like straight up racist. Like, like yeah, just we're like supposed to like this guy a little bit, and he's like yeah. a, he's like and one then of the good like racists. Ten minutes, ten minutes later, his opponent gives him his medal. Yeah, for some sort of act of something yeah. that happens. Yeah, like the team they lose to walks up to them and hands them all medals for tr like hands them all their medals for trying so hard, and I'm like that guy just called you a slur. Why are you like don't give him a medal? Yeah. Also, wow. wasn't it like. The main guy on the other team killed our main character's father or something? Yes, yes, that's why it was such a big dilemma it's for like, him, because it, this was like... He, he had, had yeah, he's gonna go fight father. this guy. God. Like, killed him with the power of martial arts? I yeah. think in killed the tournament, him, yeah, him, like yeah, in 20 a previous years ago iteration or of the same oh. tournament, like, 20 years ago. Yeah. And Damn. This, this guy is still on the other team, and he's still kicking ass, and he's still better than everybody, and he still wins. Oh, uh, is, is it? Was it? I don't. I'm not going to remember the title. Great. I'm just going to look. Yeah. I'm going to ask Lil Z, and if she remembers, I'll ask Connor to put it. Because I think screen. maybe what it was is that like, I think the tournament was already over. Like all of his other teammates got their asses handed to them, so they had already lost the series. But the main guy, like. 
it was based, it was a grudge match essentially between yeah. the guy he had a vendetta against, and he actually had him in a place where he could have just killed him, yeah. but instead he lets him up off the mat, and so the his opponent tearfully gives him his medal and the other something like that. Yeah, yeah. it was and very I'm like, cheesy and generic. That yeah. sounds exactly like something Scott Atkins would have been in if it yeah. was made in the last ten years. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Right Scott Atkins is fun. And then, yeah. uh, and then, uh, on the topic of just bad movies in general, my beloved Alien Warfare. Alien Warfare is so good. Yeah, that that movie is the personification of uh, in English four eyes. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you still have any of those lists of like all the bad movies we watched? Oh back my gosh, like, no. like 2012, 2013. No, 14. I I don't have those lists at all, and I'm really right. sad because I was was looking for them recently and I couldn't find them. All I remember is I put like a fake name on my list. I ranked all the movies we watched, all the bad movies we watched, and I I put a fake name for each one. Um, and I don't remember any of them off the top of my head except for. One of the movies was like a zero. I think it was the 9 11 Commission Report movie, um, which is just called the 9 11 Commission Report, even though it has nothing to do with the. It doesn't even have anything to do with 9 11. Um, because it's, uh, it's like. It wants to be Zero Dark 30, but it's not. They're not even remotely talented enough for that. So in my, I remember on my list I called it Zero Dark Shitty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, back to the game. Oh yeah. We, you know, we finished up the media and, and went over to another event. This was Elements of Style, on I think what was it yeah. Diablo, right? Yeah. But you see, I'm limited to slide spins, butters. So mostly slides and spins, because, like, yeah, you could butter, but it doesn't feel like it gives you that many points. And so here you could definitely see kind of the jankiness that comes with rails and also the jankiness that comes with competitions. Yeah, Because once again, like, if you really screw something up, it doesn't feel like the game, like, is going to penalize you for it at all. Like, it's going to put you back right in front of the object. And sure, if you have, like, a multiplier of, you know, X2 or 3 or so, it's going to take that away, but it, you know, these competitions... I don't know, don't really feel engaging. It just kind of feels like, all right, trick, then do stuff down the whole thing. You're not really going to lose unless the game really absolutely won't let you get on anything. And also you know? in terms of like the competition itself, it's taken sort of the, uh, well, not the Johnny Mosley approach. A bunch of games do this where they just randomize a number within a range and assign mm. it to a name. And it's like, that's it. That's the competition. Yeah. Patrick got I, I 22,000 like, points. Beat if him. you were doing, like, Xbox Live versus your bros trying to really do a high score, it would be more engaging. But again, yeah. all I really need to do is, you know, make sure I get more than fucking Patrick does yeah. each yeah. round. Fucking Kololo. It just seems to me like, I don't know, the game is at its best when you're moving quickly. And this competition yeah. really has you going slow. And, and this is... Dirt. Yeah, this is the one time they do a bunch of, you know, yeah, man-made elements where you're expected, I guess, to plan your approach and... Yeah. The game you know, interact just simply things. does not seem like it's built for that. Yeah. It seems like there's this uh, is... not if a If you lot didn't of style. have all these UI elements, I feel like this does look like a video, like this is tightening up the graphics a little bit to me. Yeah. All right, it looks like a Shockwave Flash game. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I remember that, that was the uh, era of online culture I grew up in. I, I didn't you spend a lot of time on Newgrounds, but I loved Shockwave games. Those were uh, those were delightful. And this really it was... does... What? Yeah, good. No, no, good. It, it really does look like one of those, but with like a better graphics engine. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a thing where you do need to contextualize it based on the time it came out. Because, like, you can't just say right now, like, Stoked looks like a mobile game. Because mm. mobile game means something completely different now than it did, you know, before. But, yeah, yeah released in Every 2009. Every five years, mobile games look totally different. But, yeah. yeah, like, released in 2009, that is the closest kind of thing that, you know, certain parts of this, or, again, definitely the Stoked Rider series that this was part of before, you know, this game, look like those kind of, yeah, Flash games. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're, you know, yeah, 3D, but, you know, running on some, like, really shitty Dell that 
so you get just like five frames a second and really bad physics and blah blah blah. Yeah, once again, this is a major glow up from what come before. That's true. But all right, so we got through K2, we unlocked Mount Shuksan. I don't actually know how to say that, but it's like up in Washington. And uh, that's where we're going to go next for more races, media stuff, another competition after that. So join us then.